speaking for Gary, who's our president and across the room here. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, this is a great opportunity for two divisions in two different regions to get together. And uh, just uh, Thursday night, I had a call from Dave Capron, who's the uh, superintendent of the North Central Region. And he wanted to know what we were doing because Pete, the president who lives in Traverse City, was very concerned because we don't have any insurance right now in the North Central Region and because uh, of some screw up in paperwork or whatever. So he was very concerned about what we were doing here. Were we doing train shows? Were we do, was, were people coming to buy stuff? Were we doing, um, uh, were we going to people's layouts, you know, where somebody could fall related to the insurance thing? And I said, no, Pete and Dave, it's a really simple deal. Two divisions across two different regions are getting together through Zoom to have a presentation and meet together and uh, between a restaurant and a whole lot of homes. And that's what we're doing. And they said, holy smokes, that's pretty cool. Uh, congratulations, you know, on what you're doing. So uh, I don't know if this is a first or not, but uh, it is a, a, it's a neat opportunity. And then on top of that, adding in a speaker to it for us from, uh, from, from uh, Mason City, Iowa. So that's good right. job guys. <laughs> well, thank you, Rich, and uh, thanks everybody for coming. It is a uh, it is a great opportunity, and uh, so it's nice to see everybody here. the um, The presenter for today is as Clark Prost, and Clark is from Mason City, Iowa. He's a very well known modeler and uh, specializes in excellent scenery, realism, and uh, and strict adherence to prototype standards. And uh, what he's been able to do um, is take some relatively uh, plain Jane out of the box uh, boxcar models and rolling stock models and, and uh, bring them up so that they look exactly like the prototype. He, he will go as far as to take a, a period photo and, uh, and recreate that scene on his layout to the point where when you see a picture of one and the other, um, it's, it's almost hard to determine which one's the model and which one's the, uh, the actual prototypical photo. Um, he models the uh, M and St. L and uh, he, he just, uh, I don't know, Clark, if you'd say you're com you've completed that layout, but uh, his, his new layout is the Story City branch and uh, we've been able to see a lot of that in the Model Railroad Press as well as on our Thursday night Zooms, which uh, if you're interested in that, you can contact me or Ron. We get together on Thursday nights and do this sort of stuff too. So um, really Happy. pleased to have Clark present for us. And, and so I'll turn it over to Clark. If I knew I was gonna get that kind of introduction, I would have given you more money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's... Uh, pretty embellishing, I'll sit to say the least. Uh, lately, I've been into uh, uh, more into um, uh, generic, uh, just upper Midwestern Corn Belt generic modeling. I built a section of the layout that uh, uh, was in, I think it's in the March uh, MR that talked about uh, uh, building something that looks real but really isn't. But what I'm going to talk about today is just uh, taking some out-of-the-box kits and trying to bring them up so they uh, better match the prototype. I wouldn't go as far as to say they were perfect, but uh, they're close. Uh, and uh, today's word from Big Bird is M, and we'll find out why as we go on. Hmm because this is supposed to be an informative program. I think Big Bird likes to be informative. Uh, first car I'm gonna talk about is a car uh, from the railroad model. This is a, a standard uh, AAR 1937 design, 10 foot inside height box car. There were thousands of these things. Um, models were made and still are being made ready to run but for kids, they were done by uh, IMWX, uh, which became Red Caboose. Also, Intermountain makes this model, as well as uh, 
uh, Branch Line put this out in their Yard Master series, which was a, a, a simpler kit with some molded on detail. Um, but this card, if you look at it, for years I've struggled with this. I have the painting data for these cars, and it says the roofs were unpainted. But if you look at the roof on, from this angle, it certainly looks painted. But if you look here closely at the running board, you can see once it gets past the end of the roof, it's not painted. It's, it's galvanized uh, steel. So this is basically what the kit looks like uh, when you take it out of the box. It was kind of fun. The last brain show I was at was up in St. Paul uh, about this time last year and earlier in March. And uh, it was a big show in a, in a big uh, arena. And there were a couple of guys standing next to me in one of the booths. And one of them pulled out a rail box. He opened it up, he looked the thumb through it, put the lid back on and put it back. And the guy that was with him says, um, oh, didn't you like that car? He says, no, it had too many parts. Okay, well, the Acurail has maybe a half a dozen parts. You can see this car has quite a bit more, but that's what makes it uh, a finer model. Uh, this particular car is uh, one that was done by Displains Hobbies uh, with a special uh, paint job and uh, the Viking roof, uh, which the model we're going to make has the kit uh, a diagonal panel roof, not diagonal, the rectangular panel roof, excuse me. So if we first uh, put the car, put the underframe under the car, parts underneath it, uh, put the trucks on it, uh, what the things that I've done different from the kit is I, the plastic uh, corner sills or the sill steps uh, are pretty fragile and they'll break off under use. Uh, I know in the old days, people would go to swap meets and they wouldn't pick, wouldn't buy an Atherton car because one of the stirrup steps was broke off. And uh, nowadays, the first thing you do with a car that has mold on sill steps is cut them off and replace them. Um, but as you can see, I, Yarmouth Models makes uh, an etched uh, step that uh, fits in uh, where the, the plastic one is supposed to fit. These cars also had what they call roping staples. At work, we called them pulling loops. Uh, there are several definitions, but I think believe roping staple is the correct pronunciation for what they're called. Uh, basically what I did is instead of drilling two holes and then trying to match up a bent wire, I just drill one hole, bend the loop uh, to make a J and then uh, poke the thing in with a little ACC. And that about does it for the sides of it uh, for now. The ends are a little more work. Uh, I always replace those lower grip wires with, uh, with wire ones because then when people reach in there with the skewers, they're easily breaking, broken off. I also like to use uh, detail associates, uh, couple of lift bars. They're getting extremely hard to find now. The tangent model makes, makes one that, uh, uh, a metal one that's already pre-bent that I haven't tried yet, but I may when I run out of the detail associates one. The MSA now cars, the tack boards or, or the placard the end of the car uh, were held off step steel. So I used a couple pieces of styrene strip to uh, replicate that. I also used uh, an end metal uh, brake step but most importantly, on the MSNL cars, they used uh, a lot of MSNL like the Superior Handbrake. And they used these on a lot of cars. And Gene Green talked the caboose into making that a kit that they did for the, for the Historical Society, the Northwestern Historical Society. I believe these things are still available through the Northwestern Historical Society. Uh, definitely something you need to add to this car if you don't do much else. Uh, that uh, roof is what I'll talk about next. Uh, 
I painted the roof with a mixture of silver and gray to give it a galvanized look. Then I would just went back with a paintbrush and painted uh, true color Northwestern uh, paint color uh, on roof over the seam caps and around the, the perimeter uh, over all the rivet. Uh, railroads used to do this on occasion, or the manufacturers would. They would put uh, what's called car cement, which was like a black tar material. And I think it's uh, S, uh, um, S. Liam or something like that. It's a proper name. Um, and then sometimes they would cover that up with car body paint. So I didn't want to be uh, too careful with this, not masking it off, just rush painting it. But it gives the effect then when you look at the car from uh, ground level, the roof looks painted, but it's really not. I also added uh, the new uh, KD US Gypsum uh, running board because these cars had steel running boards. Uh, that Northwestern color is a pretty good match for the paint that Red Caboose used, as you can see in the photo. And then here's the car uh, ready on the layout. Um, you can see that uh, I, I patched out the original uh, weight, weight of the car and uh, the new date and also the repack data. Uh, cars, uh, probably in this era, I'm, I used to model 54, now I model 48 to 50. Uh, after about 18 months, they were reweighed, and then they were reweighed about every three years after that. Um, so the, the car shop or the, the reway station, uh, some company placed with a scale, uh, they would patch out the previous uh, data and uh, station and then print on their, the new data for the new weight and also their station and the date. Um, I did the same for the repacking of the bearings. Um, that would change periodically also. The other thing that, uh, I guess in here, I'm, I'm being ahead of myself. I think I have a, another slide that I should be talking about this. Um, here, if I read at the top my notes, uh, I actually used uh, an airbrush dull coat, 50-50 uh, mix of uh, lacquer thinner and dull coat, and then a couple of drops or a little gob of uh, uh, testers off-white color. It, the stuff that was in the little tube we, or the little bottle that we used to use when uh, 50 years ago, paint models, they're still available at uh, Hobby Lobby and box stores. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that gives the, the model a bit of a faded look. Then I also used uh, Pestels. I, I, since I ran out of flocal paint, I don't airbrush. Uh, weathering anymore. I like the pan pastels, they're quick and easy. I can weather a car in about two seconds. Uh, I use a, instead of using the, the sponges, pan pastel cells, uh, they put the stuff on pretty heavy. I prefer to use a cosmetic brush and uh, uh, brush out of black and then use a cosmetic sponge, which are these little white triangular shaped things that come in a in a in a package for a couple of bucks, and that'll that I rub that on. It takes some of the some of the color off and also blends it. Uh, use mostly black or or dark gray, and then I like burnt umber for along the bottom and on the ends. Okay, this is what we should be talking about the about the uh, uh, the decals. The only thing I did mention is these cars have. I believe their trust information uh, stenciled on uh, between the two handrails on the left or the bracket grabs. And uh, I added that from uh, a piece of decal. Uh, it's not, you can't read it, so that's good because it's, it's not the, what's supposed to be there. But the, the lettering shape is, is real similar and that's what's important. I've also added uh, chalk marks on the cars, uh, which are real, Real prominent in this era, and uh, I, on the on the route card holder, I put a route card, and that's just a piece of of old decal stripe. Uh, 
you'll see why we're calling this uh, M is the word for the day. Uh, next car up is this uh, MKD car, uh, 95,000 series. Uh, nice looking model, uh, like single sheet cars. And I don't think it's available now, but on time, Accurail did this car. And you can see here, there's not near as many pieces in this kit as there is in the, in the other one. And we've got, uh, that causes us some issues because we have these molded on uh, details that have to come off because they're, they're not completely accurate. As you can, uh, as you can see here, uh, there's, there were grabs and not ladders on the, on the car. Um, there's a, a steel strapping, a, a steel plating along the top of the car. It's kind of interesting. And there's an extra diagonal stripe on the top of each corner that's not on the model. Also, this is a 96,000 series car and it's in that yellow paint, the Sloan yellow. And the only difference I could see by looking at them just at a glance is that uh, the door brace is, is lower on this series car than it is on the 95,000 series. There may be other differences, but for the side of the car, that's what I can see. So what I did is I took up an eight panel, this is a one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, eight panel, uh, intermodal, or excuse me, eight, man, eight panel Accurail car. And I used 5,000 styrene to add those, uh, those metal, metal strips along the top and also the angle strips. And I scraped off the, the molded on ladders and grab irons and I'll replace them all with uh, the TG 18 inch straight or, or drop grabs, whichever are appropriate. This shows the body of the car has been primer going to use uh, true color paint, I think most of the time. Uh, but a lot of times the other color I like to use is uh, uh, scale coat. Uh, but this was painted with uh, Tamaya uh, primer. It's, it's pretty nice stuff. Um, what I'm featuring here is the underframe. Uh, the bottle comes with a, what's called a fish belly underframe. And these cars had straight center sills. So I had to make up uh, the center sills, just some pieces of styrene uh, glued in, uh, teaching brake parts. Uh, and for the hangers, I used their grab irons and uh, some wire. Uh, makes the bottom look a little more accurate. It looks a little nicer from the side. Or if some of my friends come over and uh, run the railroad, then the car looks good when it's laying on its side too. Uh, here's the finished car. Uh, a lot of people like to uh, fret over Sloan yellow, what color it should be. I had some testers, briefer yellow, and I painted it with that. Uh, use speed which decals on the car. They're now sold by National car, Scale Car. Uh, you can look them up on the on the Google them. Uh, they sell a lot of um, freight car mini kits, and uh, also now they carry the Speedwitch line of decals. You can see where I've added some archer rivets uh, to those corner braces and the, that sheet metal along the top of the of the side of the car. Uh, looking from right to left, it looks like I I added a Tichy brake step on the end. Uh, I bent my own. Uh, uncoupling lever because it it just goes straight across with a little bow in it or what in the electrical conduit bending people call saddle bend. Uh, KD couplers again uh, this car I used the Accurail trucks they have, the cars have spring planks so I use the spring plank truck. Uh, all my cars have uh, the KD scale head couplers with uh, the trip pin removed and I like to use uh, Intermountain wheel sets. They are superb and uh, solved all my operational issues. And a couple more things to point out on this car is the, the rope staples or pulling loops as I'll call them are on the side of the sill on these cars. 
And you can see I put the, the one at the uh, right end is easier to see, but I had too many arrows down there. So I put the arrow up to the, the car, one on the other end and a couple of, of uh, Chi-Chi rivet heads uh, to mount it. Uh, also use A-line corner steps. Use those on 99% of my models. Uh, another thing that was interesting I saw in the photos is there's a little guard, uh, a little piece of uh, steel plate uh, makes a guard uh, for over, and one, one of the brake components is close to the side of the car. Put a couple of Tichy rivets on it, or not Tichy, but uh, uh, Archer rivets on it while I had them out. And uh, that pretty much completes the car. Uh, there were three of us that built these cars at about the same time. Uh, Al Brown lives down in Florida, and he did his car in the, in the boxcar red with the white lettering. Uh, Charlie Duckworth lives in Omaha. He was going to build one of these cars too, but his had a catastrophic, <laughs> a catastrophic failure, and uh, he's waiting for another model to, to do his again. What he had done is uh, being a lot more, both of these fellows are a lot more precise modelers than, than myself. And uh, they like to take a piece of uh, styrene strip and slide it in under the grab irons on like the ladder. And it keeps the, the correct, uh, keeps them straight and also keeps the correct width away from the car. And then when Charlie had everything where he wanted it, he wanted to run a dab of uh, gel super glue over the inside of the car to secure the handrails or the grab irons, excuse me. But he accidentally grabbed the thin stuff and it wicked up through the holes and stuck the piece of plastic to the side of the car. So it, he uh, basically just uh, tossed that in the bin and uh, now it's gonna have to start over again. This is a Speedwitch model, a, a resin kit. Uh, it's not available at this time. Uh, I had this car um, and I decided to make a model using the Accurail car. I got the Accurail car for under $10, I'm sure. This kit, uh, if it comes out in the market again, will sell for about $65. I sold this car on eBay for over $200. Uh, so I'm happy with the Accurail car. Um, next up will be a Milwaukee Road car, uh, another single sheath car. I like single sheath cars a lot. They have a, a lot of character, I think. Uh, this is a, a six panel uh, Accurail model that I'm going to use for this car. Um, this is what the kit would look like in the box. Uh, there are some things that need to be changed again on the car. First thing you have to do is scrape off all that molded on detail. Uh, the Milwaukee, even though this kit came as a Milwaukee road car, I'll talk a little bit about that why I'm here, is that uh, the other day uh, on one of the IO chat groups on uh, the internet, they were talking about Bed Bell models. And I remember years ago going up to uh, swap meets in the Twin Cities, and there'd be a guy have three tables of Bed Bell cars, and people were scarfing them up like candy. Uh, and the reason being is Athern at the time was uh, had what a half a dozen paint schemes and only one number in each, and Bed Bell was taking the Athern body and putting a fairly accurate paint job on them uh, for a number of other railroads, and. Uh, it was a good way to get diversity in your fleet. Uh, and Ray, modelers, models companies still do that today. They'll take an accurate paint job and put it on an inaccurate car. So you have to be careful. It's buyer beware with any of the manufacturers. The only ones I can think of offhand that, that you can be safe with is like uh, Tangent, uh, KD. KD has made a few mistakes, but not many. Uh, and the guys are uh, Maloco, his stuff is right on. Uh, exact rail is pretty good. Uh, but for your, if you're going to go buy a ready to run intermount car, uh, I would be careful of, of the paint scheme. And again, 
uh, you're going to have to make some changes on the car. Uh, it's easier to do on a kit than a ready to run car. But anyway, you can see this one is painted up for the Milwaukee car uh, in the same series as that photograph. But we have to add some angles again on the end. And uh, this car had, it did have ladders. I have to have some resin ladders that were uh, the, the correct width of styles and uh, gaps in uh, the rungs. You could replace them with uh, TG ladders, I'm sure. Or you could just cut off the tops and the bottoms of the ladders that are molded on. Only that makes it more difficult to put those angles on the uh, strap iron angles on the end of the car. Uh, again, I added a different A-line step this time. A-line makes three designs of steps. Uh, I replaced these with, I think this is a type B. The other ones were called type A. Uh, but grab under the under the ladder means it's only a six run ladder. Uh, the, the most prominent thing on the side of the car is the door stop. Uh, so I made one of those out of some scraps, probably four by fours or six by sixes or some combination of those two. Uh, the underframe, again, I, I looks like I cheated a little bit with this center sill and I didn't add that uh, angle piece on the top. I used the brake components that come with the car over again, just cut off the, the, the pegs on them and, and uh, super glued them on or in a more appropriate position. I had a little struggle trying to figure out exactly where to put the, the air reservoir tank. And you can see I, uh, I kind of made a nest for it in the cross member and then decided I need to move it on a little closer to the center of the car. Uh, the ends of the car did the most work. Uh, the model with the wood ends comes with uh, four vertical uh, supports or, or bracing. Uh, I cut off two and along with the ladder, I left the two center ones. Uh, I made uh, some the angle long angled angle irons out of a couple pieces of uh, evergreen uh, styrene. Same with, uh, use 10 thousandths uh, for these uh, kind of pointed supports on the center ones. Um, I bent my own grab and used a, used a TGI bolt this time instead of the DAI bolts. Uh, other, I, I think the only thing I saved on the end of the car would have been the brake platform. I modified that a little bit. Uh, yeah, obtainer valve is also TG. I think it must not be TG. It must be somebody else's. It's the black and not gray. Most teachy stuff is gray. And then this is the car uh, finished on the layout. Uh, again, the same, same drill as before. Uh, this car I painted with, uh, I wrote down here that I painted it with a combination of steel coat boxcar red and uh, boxcar red two. Boxcar red is, uh, is a brown color and boxcar red two is more reddish. And then they make an oxide also, which is even more red or uh, orange if you prefer. Uh, I took all three of those two ounce bottles and a bunch of empty uh, uh, Flocoa bottles and then mixed up a variety of different colors so that uh, I can paint several cars and not have a match because uh, that's the, the, the worst thing you can do is have uniformity in your boxcar red. I used to try and uh, match uh, the color on uh, on uh, railroad models. If I had three NP cars, I wanted them all to match. But in uh, looking at pictures of of uh, Milwaukee cars in the Milwaukee uh, uh, Morning Sun Milwaukee uh, freight car uh, color guide, I could see their their boxcar red was all over the map. So I don't worry about uh, colors anymore. Uh, you can see here that I've, I've just painted on uh, some patch marks uh, where it was in the photos on the car. Uh, decals on this car are from a Mark Vaughn set. Uh, Mark Vaughn does no longer sell his Wabash decar line, but some of it are all been bought by Gary Rowe. 
uh, Gary can be looked up on the EQ, you can Google him and uh, get his email address if you'd like to buy some decals. He sells uh, several different road names. They're very nice decals. They're made by uh, Rail Graphics out of uh, Chicago. That's uh, He's retired out of his own. Uh, but these decals were used in all the Sunshine and, uh, and Westerfield resin kits. Um, this particular set that I use was from Milwaukee spent grain box cars. Those are the are the ribside cars, or they also uh, the Wabash and the Northwestern had some that had the uh, roof hatches for uh, loading in into the the box cars, and the doors were usually painted uh, orangeish color to donate or designate what was inside the car. Uh, I used a combination of the decals for that car. And also in this set is uh, one of the subsidiary, I think Edward Bay Hoppers. Um, and uh, I used uh, the emblem, I'm sure I used that tilted box from that set and maybe the uh, Milwaukee and, and uh, uh, numbers. I, I don't know for sure which I used at this time. Uh, this car was built um, not that long ago maybe two or three months ago. Um, but I made several cars using using this lettering scheme and, and uh, I can tell you offhand uh, which parts I use from which off the same decal set. Last car we're gonna talk about, this one here is probably the most fancy of the bunch. Um, these cars were bought by the railroad I modeled, used in 1938, prior to World War II, they didn't last completely through the war. I think they were probably replaced by the cars that I showed you first. When they started getting steel cars, they got rid of these guys. Uh, these are kind of an interesting car, even though they were gone by the time that I model. Um, this is an, the old timers kit, uh, kind of a, uh, I remember building one of these 30, 30, 40 years ago. And it was really cool at the time. But nowadays, they're kind of a, a grotesque, I guess you could call the detail on them. Uh, and I really thought long and hard about fooling with this kit or using one of the new Acurel 36-foot cars. But this car, this undecorated kit, I happened to get from a friend at a flea market about two or three years ago for two bucks. So I figured I would, I would spend some time on it. First thing I had to do was fill in the huge hole for the gross looking uh, 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 door tracks. And, uh, and the, the roof was wood on the car and on the, uh, they were steel, uh, what they call a FLA roof on the, on the real model. So I sanded the roof down uh, pretty flat and then added uh, a piece of 10,000 styrene and then some battens uh, spaced out along the roof. Uh, the running board is uh, cut down from a, a wooden running board cut down from a, either Inner Mountain or Red Caboose kit. Uh, at the ends of the car, you can see I scraped off the detail that was on there, added TG ladder around our, our grab irons and uh, their rivet heads. Uh, you could drill extra holes and put the whole rivet in there, but it's easier just to cut the head off and glue it on. All of the gray stuff around the door comes in, uh, uh, Tichi sells a door hardware kit, and that's a real nice thing to have for building models like this. Uh, the batten along the bottom is, again, just styrene strip with archery rivets on it. Uh, what's interesting about these cars is that evidently the seat, the nickel plate must have repainted these at, at, or rebuilt these cars at several different times because uh, they have four different ends on them. Uh, here you see one with a inverse Murphy steel end, one with uh, two hat section uh, vertical supports. Here's another one with a uh, angle iron bracing the end, and one with uh, a steel Hutchins inverse end. Because I couldn't get the steel ends easily, I decided to uh, use the the I-beam ends. Years ago, I built one of these cars uh, and I made uh, it with uh, hat section ends. 
This time I thought I would try uh, I-beams with some uh, Archer rivets on them. Uh, went a little crazy with uh, uh, teaching rivet heads and, uh, and bolt castings or nut castings. Uh, bent my own uh, uncoupling lever again. Uh, lots of Tichi parts on the ends of the cars. The Tichi stuff is is really nice stuff. And it's really reasonably priced. You can buy. I think all their packages of their detail parts are around three three to four bucks. Uh, the end of our frame of this car comes with uh, a, a molded angle iron with four queen posts on it, and cars had six. So I tossed that. I put on a piece of uh, IEM uh, and added Tichi queen post. Uh, I'm and also a Tichi uh, KD brake component. Um, I would have I use eight pound test monofilament line for the for the rods. Uh, if I were to do it again or even at the time I was thinking I would have been better off to use six pound. Uh, but it was already uh, on my fishing rods and I didn't want to cut the 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 terminal tackle off and replace it. So I just grabbed the spool of wire. Uh, or a spool of line that was eight pound test. Um, reason I used the monofilament is I thought that in, by using the teaching turnbuckles, I could brush paint uh, the wire or the, the fishing line and then not brush paint uh, in the middle of the turnbuckle. And therefore, it would be less noticeable instead of having put a wire in each end of the turnbuckle in the center open. Uh, there is a friend of mine who recently passed away that did that, and he put a board through all of the turnbuckles, kind of like uh, the rod back in the old days. Uh, here's the car again, uh, ready for paint, been primered with that uh, Tamiya Service Primer G, which is a really good primer. I uh, thin it with, uh, I think the tester's thinner, airbrush it. Here's the car uh, painted. Uh, use I, I decals from Westerfield uh, to put on the car. They a more accurate, uh, smaller data for the cars. Uh, again, don't look too close. I'm sure it's for a 40 foot car instead of a 36 foot car. Um, one thing I forgot to mention before, again on the on the, the placards or the not not the placards, but the um, the route cards. A lot of times, these stripes I use are old, old uh, uh, author stripes, and they'll break up sometimes when I go to put the little square on. Uh, so that is the effect of of looking like someone has stapled on the the route card, and then they've come back and ripped them off again. But you leave the part that's under the staple. Uh, this picture here shows most of the. Uh, the stuff that I use for for weathering my cars. If it go from left to, I'm just going to talk about how the process I would put this on. Uh, you can see the the applicator that uh, Pam Fast sells. I don't like that thing, but I used it on this car with the burnt sienna uh, just to uh, lighten the roof up somewhat. Uh, and then I went back with that. Uh, the, the angled cosmetic brush that I use on the ends of the cars for a wheel splash. And I put black along the edges of the batten, roof battens and then use that cosmetic sponge to just kind of blend everything and wipe some of it off. Uh, on the board, you can see I use that gray uh, Prismacolor pencil to uh, lighten up some of the boards. Uh, I also then went over the, the sides of the car with that round brush uh, with black and then the underframe and the bottom lower sides with the bird humber and also use that angle brush on the end of the car for the wheel splash. Also used the two brown Prismacolor pencils to uh, kind of distress the, the wood on the sides of the car with a little paint failure. And lastly, you can uh, use a, an eraser to remove uh, the pan pastels. 
and I use that over the the lettering, uh, the data that would have been uh, changed when the car was was reweighed, so that it doesn't look exactly the same as the rest of the data. Uh, here's the finished car uh, on the layout. You can see where I've just kind of run that pencil over the side of the car to uh, give the, the wood a little bit of a of discoloration, add a little character uh, to the car. Um, this is from uh, looking at it from the other end. So I've got two more projects lined up of, of this same style. Um, one would be um, uh, a Northwestern riveted side PS1, uh, and the other one is a square corner um, Sulai car. If you have the Athern blue box cars, which I'm sure many people still have some, uh, they were originally built for the, the IC, the Sioux, and the DSSA. They were the only railroads that had the Athern car body. Um, so I'm going to do one in Sioux line. I, I've already done one in, in uh, IC and DSSA over the years. So this time I'm going to do a Sioux line car. Uh, this is the car that I'm going to do uh, into the Northwestern riveted PS1. Um, most of the body parts that come with the car are uh, that I'm going to reuse are on the box lid. I'm also going to change out the ladders to uh, to a PS1 style ladders. Uh, the, also, the roof and the doors and the ends are for uh, Intermountain PS1 cars. And the nice thing about Intermountain cars, the ends are not molded on there. They, they get, so they're easily interchangeable with anything you want to put on them. I do have the, the decals for this car. I just didn't think to dig them out when I was taking the photograph. Uh, the other car that I'm going to do, the suit line, you can see I have uh, the decals for it now. I bought those uh, off the internet from K4 decals. Uh, for the square corner ends, I'm going to use. Uh, resin molded ends from Chad Boaz. He sells those for like three or five bucks for a pair. Uh, he has several different designs. Uh, also ordered uh, from Shapeways, the classing handbrake that uh, the Sioux line and the DSS cars and I had. Uh, so you get a whole bunch of them and I only needed one, but that's what I have. Other than that, uh, I will use most of the models off of the kit the parts from the kit. Not sure on the trucks yet. I haven't looked that closely at photographs. And that's the end of the presentation. And thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Very nice. Thanks, Clark. Very yeah, good. Thank you very much. Fascinating. I have a question about sure. uh, when you're replacing those fish bellies, uh, with the styrene underneath the, uh, hmm. yeah, I'll find a photo. Might be yeah, you don't have to find a photo. I was trying. I was trying to figure out. On one of them, you had it marked. It's point zero four zero times. <laughs> excuse me. Point one two five. <laughs> Is that a styrene strip? It looks like a channel. Yeah. No, it was a stri strip. As you in this photo here, just like a I didn't, strip. you know, I, I built like built this car uh, a few months ago, uh, <laughs> but a couple of these cars I built about a year ago, and I really don't remember what I used. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, I just grab stuff out of the scrap box. Uh, but this one here is is done more correctly, and it's like a, a probably a, a twenty or forty inch or. Uh, thousands wide and uh, 120, 125 deep. And then I put another piece over the top that's probably 20 by uh, 40 uh, or maybe 60. Uh, it could be also, they do make dimensional lumber. It could be like a two by six or a two by eight that I put along the top of that car, the top. And these are actually, there's six pieces here because they're cross bearer is a solid piece. Uh, so I didn't want to cut that into, I just made pieces that fit in between. 
Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's it's a simple. Let's see how you did that. Yeah, there there's a <laughs> channel for the fish belly and the frame that come with it. There's a chan two channels here that it right. sets down inside. Right. And they they have a slot in them to go over these cross bears. Exactly. And then the the the, 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 uh, the, the cross ties are cut. They're, they don't go all the way across. Um, they only go on the sides here. So it's easy to take a piece of styrene and just set it in that slot. If you uh, cut, it, uh, cut to the, the correct length. Okay, I see. Yeah, so it's just six <laughs> pieces of vertical. And the other car, I didn't put that, that uh, angle or, or extra piece on the top. Uh, I think these things were originally I-beams that ran down the center of the car. Uh, you can see the, uh, if you look uh, here, you can see that there's a molded on rivet strip and that's probably well, where the bottom of flange of the I B or the C channel is what they are. Uh, channel iron would be uh, welded on, or riveted onto the, to the car. Or the, the bottom would be riveted onto the, to the C channel, I guess, would be a better way to look at it. <laughs> when you bring it over here, you change parts. Because I've got a few <clears throat> of those cars I yeah, to assemble, and I was thinking, yeah, uh, I'd like to do that. Yeah, if you have a photo of the prototype, but not all of the cars had uh, uh, these two. I I happened to choose to model had the straight center sills. Uh, some of these cars definitely had uh, uh, the fish belly, but not all of them. Uh, Okay. So you know, it's not, if you look at a photo of the of the of the car, you can tell pretty much. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> I, I got a question. Sure. Uh, in the beginning, you talked about the uh, car that had the uh, galvanized roofing. Didn't a lot of cars come from manufacturers that way early on? Uh, well, I think it's kind of funny because I've got some. Uh, some painting, the basic painting data from uh, um, Home and Stand, and it would be more or less for their for their PS1 box car. Home and Standard built, you know, I have a friend that gets confused because uh, when he thinks Pullman Standard, he thinks the PS1 design. But Pullman Standard has been building cars for years. These cars were 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 built by uh, General American. But they they could have been built by by uh, Pullman Standard just as well, and uh, uh, some cars the, the manufacturers wanted painted roofs, some didn't, and I can't tell you who did what and when. Some had the 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 uh, the tie strips or the, the gosh, can't think of the name of them now. Uh, the little clips hold the panels together. Some of those had uh, had the uh, astoleum or the car cement on them and just left black. Some didn't. You know, it's it's almost it's really difficult to tell because there are very few photos taken of the car roofs themselves. And then if, if they were painted over time, that paint would fail and it would chip off. So if you're modeling, say, by the 70s. Uh, most of the car roofs would look like this car, even if they had been painted to start with. And then back to what I started to say, the Pullman standard, their standard paint job was to put car cement on ends of the roofs. So uh, if you got a car for Pullman, it was basically going to be a black car uh, with a, a, the color of your choice on the sides. Could have the rest of the car painted uh, to match if you chose. Uh, but if you just pick what Pullman was going to paint for you, it would have black ends and a roof. But yes, it, it's hard to tell. Uh, a lot of cars, the, that paint chipped off in later years. Um, many, many cars had the roofs painted. Uh, I've looked at, uh, at photos of Ariel. Uh, the, I'm trying to think of the fellow's name now. Oh, gosh. There was a guy that took a whole bunch of colored slides 
during World War II. And he took a bunch of railroad slides in uh, the Chicago area. And a lot of them are area, uh, up above shots. And you can see the roofs of the cars. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. You could look him up on the internet. Uh, all his, his information is at the Library of Congress. You can probably, I, I'm sorry, I can't, can't think of the fellow's name. Uh, but yeah, it, it, most cars had painted roofs. Uh, some did, I'll leave it like that. Any more? Or are we done? <laughs> All right. I guess I'm done. Okay. Oh, let thank me, you, Mark. That was excellent. Yeah, let me get rid of unshare here. Okay. Back. Yeah. Rich, are, you're muted if you're trying to talk to us. There we go. Clark, from us at the restaurant, we want to thank you for the presentation. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah, I hope it was uh, entertaining or hey, you got some something from it. Yeah. Uh, like, like I always say, when, when I go to other people's layouts to operate, I learn what, what not to do. <laughs> very interesting. Very, very helpful. Well, thank you. Yeah, great stuff. All right. I uh, seen a picture of a pink hopper car last night. Uh, I mean, it was a model that we picked up. Did they ever do pink cars in real yeah. type? Yes. Uh, there were several back in the what they I think was the uh, the pre the the. Oh gosh, dang it! Anyway, there was a time in the seventies when. Uh, uh, independent companies, mostly grain elevators, uh, bought their own cars because the railroads uh, couldn't service them with their own cars. And there were, I believe, four uh, elevators here in Iowa that ordered cars. And I think they had, I uh, uh, can't remember the reporting marks, TLX. Uh, there were four letters in the reporting marks, but that was three of the four letters. Uh, but that, well, Farmville was one. Uh, uh, Albert City was another. Uh, Plemy Co-op would have been another. And then there was a fourth one that I can't think of right offhand. But yeah, they were three bay uh, grain hoppers. Uh, I'm not up on my grain hoppers, so I can't give you. Uh, the grain hoppers are designated by their cubic uh, capacity. Like 4427 would be a smaller one. And I, I don't model that era, so I'm not up on those. But I know Athern did those years ago, and uh, their a tangent has done most of them. Uh, if you find one of the Albert City ones, uh, there's a probably a, one incorrect piece to the lettering there, is that the, the A uh, in Albert and the C in City uh, were, were in, a, in an aluminum square rather than just being all pink sides. But yeah, there were there were there were four railroads or four independent uh, companies that I know of that had the pink covered hoppers. They're still around today, only now they're 90% rust. But you you <laughs> can still you can still see them. Yeah, I mean it just seems strange to see a model of a pink one and always wonder if it's you know prototype or not. Oh yeah, they well. They were big sellers because uh, I always say flash sells. So if you can come up with something in a bright color, people are going to buy it. All right. Well, thanks everybody for coming, uh, Clark. Wonderful presentation as always. Thank you yeah. again for joining. Yeah. Us. We'll see uh, y'all. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. Great yeah. idea. Great idea getting together. Yeah. yeah, I think it was wonderful to have everybody together on one call. And so we'll be doing that again next month on April 20th, I think it is, um, where we'll have a tour of Bill Neal's excellent uh, layout. And so uh, we'll make sure everybody gets invited to that and, and hopefully see you then. Sounds good. Yeah.
Very good job. Thank you, Thank and goodbye. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Uh, one, one comment. I think it's April 17th. Oh, is it the 17th? Sorry about that. It'll be the third yeah. Saturday at, at any rate. Yeah. That would be the third Saturday. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's when we'll have it. And for those of you that get the newsletter, uh, we'll have a blurb in there about uh, uh, Clark's presentation today and also for B, uh, for Bill's next next month. Yeah, it is the 17th. That's correct. Okay, great job. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great Saturday. All right, Thank thanks you. Clark. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.